Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this live yoga class. Um, I am Kara, and I will be teaching this beginners, fundamental beginners class. Um, so I'm going to give people just a little bit of time to join in here before we get started. Um, I hope everybody has had a good weekend and maybe have gotten things done around their house. And um, good morning, Yuda. <laughs> Just let people join in. Um, so this will be a, um, as I said, a, a fundamental beginners class. I'm really excited about doing this. Um, I'm glad you all are joining in. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, I'm Kara. <laughs> and uh, as with all yoga, nothing that we do is required. So if there is a pose that I guide you into that does not feel good on your body, then please come out of the pose. Um, I will be offering modifications. Um, if you have any questions, try and hold on to them in your head and ask them And um, when we're done and I will address those questions later on. Um, trying to think if there is anything else. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Michelle. <laughs> um, all right, so I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start off in um, a comfortable seat. It's called Sukhasana. Uh, good morning, kitty. <laughs> and um, so we'll take a seat. So Sukhasana or easy seat or comfortable seat is typically with the legs crossed. You can have one leg in front of the other if you like. Or a sitting cross leg doesn't feel good on your body. You can bring the legs out long or sometimes sitting on a blanket or a block can be really nice. Helps to um, lift up the hips above the knees. So we're gonna start off in a comfortable seat, whatever is most comfortable for you. You wanna have the spine long and the crown of the head is lifted and the head is centered over the shoulders and over the pelvis. And we'll close the eyes and breathe here. Allowing the mind and the body to settle into being here. Breathe. Yoga gives you a real opportunity to allow yourself to focus on the present moment. It gives you some space to let things that you may be stressing about or worrying about. It gives you space to let those things be outside of where you are right now. And you can focus on your breath, on this present moment, on the poses that you come in and out of. It gives you an opportunity to let the mind settle even just for a little bit.
And the mind always has a tendency to wander. So you can help bring the mind into focus by directing it towards your breath. Noticing your inhales and noticing your exhales. Maybe feeling the coolness of the air when you breathe out, breathe in. <laughs> the coolness of the air when you breathe in and the warmth of the air when you breathe out. Maybe notice how long of an inhale you're taking and how long of an exhale you're taking. To go ahead and take a big, full, deep breath in, filling the lungs all the way to the top, and pause. And open the mouth and sigh it out. Take another big, full, deep breath in, filling the lungs all the way to the top, and pause. And open the mouth and sigh it out. Take another big, full, deep breath in, but this time exhale through the nose, long and slow. Let's go ahead and gently open the eyes, maybe blink the eyes a little bit, letting your eyes adjust. And take a big, long inhale, long, slow exhale. And drop the chin towards the chest. And then bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. And take the left fingertips out on the mat beside you. So you want to keep the low belly pulling in and up to help support the low back. And take a big inhale. And exhale, drop the chin towards the chest. And inhale, bring the left ear towards the left shoulder. Take the right fingertips out on the mat beside you. And breathe here. And take a big inhale. And exhale, drop the chin towards the chest. And inhale, lift the chin and lift the gaze up towards the ceiling. And breathe. So you want to keep the neck long here. So even though we're, we're gazing up towards the ceiling, we're not wrenching our head way back and crunching the back of the neck. We're letting the neck still be long and the shoulders are down away from the ears. And take a big inhale and exhale, bring the head to center. So one of the things with yoga is uh, moving the spine in all different directions. So you'll notice through an entire yoga practice, you'll have where you know the, the spine is long and straight, you'll have where you're folding it forward, where you're bending it back, where you're twisting it, and it's all to bring lots of mobility into the spine typically so that you could sit for long hours in meditation and not get uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, 
we're not gonna be sitting long hours in meditation, but it is still really good to move the spine in lots of different ways. So we're gonna bring the hands alongside the body and inhale the arms out and up and exhale them down. And inhale the arms out and up and exhale them down. And inhale out and up and exhale down. Inhale the arms out and up. Turn towards the right and bring the left hand to the right knee and the right fingertips down behind you and breathe here. So with the spine long, shoulders down away from the ears and breathe here. So as you're inhaling, you're really lengthening the spine. And as you're exhaling, you're holding this twist, maybe turning just a little bit more into the twist. But you don't want to be really wrenching the spine. That's, that's not good. Just kind of having a, an easeful movement into the twist. And inhale, the arms up, turn towards the left, and exhale, right hand to left knee, left fingertips down behind you. Spine long, shoulders down away from the ears. So while you're twisting, you're also working on an opening of the chest. So much of our time is spent hunched over, shoulders coming forward. So we want to have a lifting in the spine, lifting in the crown of the head, and a gentle pulling together of the shoulder blades behind the back. Make sure you're breathing. And inhale the arms up and exhale, bring them down. So you're gonna roll forward over the legs, coming to a tabletop. So you want the wrists right underneath the shoulders and the knees right underneath the hips. And go ahead and take a look at your hands. You wanna have the index fingers pointing straight forward at 12 o'clock and the hands spread wide. So you end up with um, your elbow creases pointing forward. So you don't want your hands here. You've got this internal rotation of the arms. You wanna have the index fingers pointing straight forward and the elbow creases will be pointing forward. Knees right, right under the hips. <laughs> and take your gaze down between the hands you have the low belly pulling in and up. So finding a flat back here. And breathe here for a moment. And take a big inhale. And exhale, round the back, chin to chest. We're gonna hold this pose here. So you're really pressing into the mat and the shoulder blades are pulling apart behind the back here. So you have this really big rounded spine. And breathe into this shape that you've created. So take a big inhale, long, slow exhale. And inhale, you're gonna drop the belly and lift the chin and really pull the shoulder blades together behind you. So exaggerating at this movement here. So then you've got, this is cow pose. You've got this big dip in the belly. And the chin is lifted and breathe here. Really pull the shoulder blades together behind you. And take a big inhale and exhale round the back chin to chest and inhale drop the belly and lift the chin 
Exhale, round the back, chin to chest. And inhale, drop the belly and lift the chin. And move now with your own breath through these cat-cow poses. So when you're exhaling, you're rounding the back. When you're inhaling, you're dropping the belly. This is fundamental beginners, so we're gonna keep it with the basic cat cow today. Just moving the spine, inflection, extension. And on the next inhale, bring the spine to neutral. And you'll tuck the toes and lift the hips up into downward facing dog. So I want you to start off with a really generous bend in the knees. And you may need to take your hands forward about a handprint, because typically when you're coming up from tabletop, you end up with a really short downward facing dog. So take your hands out about a handprint and have a generous bend in the knees and really press back in the hands so that you can bring your head between the arms and lift the tailbone. So you're creating a straight line from your wrists all the way up to the tailbone. And breathe here. And then very slowly, start to take the legs a little bit more towards straight. I'm gonna fix my shirt for a moment. You want to keep you want to keep the head in between the arms, the ears aligned with the arms. So if you find when you start to straighten your legs that your back really starts to round up here, go ahead and bend some bring some more of a bend to the knees and breathe. And take a big inhale and exhale, lower the knees down, take them out wide, bring the big toes together and sit the hips back, coming into child's pose. Balasana. And breathe here. This is a pose that is really good to come into as a, um, a resting pose if, um, in your yoga practice, your wrists really start to hurt or a pose um, becomes, you know, is too uncomfortable, you can come down into a child's pose. Maybe give your wrists a little bit of a rotation, spread the fingers and clench them. Just give the body a little bit of a, a rest here. Inhale, lift the head just a little bit and walk the hands towards the right. So you want to keep that left sitting bone reaching down. So if it if it starts to, to come come up some, you're gonna bring the hands a little bit closer to the body. If you'd like, you can bring the left hand on top of the right and breathe. And inhale, walk the hands to center and then towards the left. You want that right sitting bone to stay rooted down. So if it starts coming up, bring the hands a little closer to the body. If you like, you can bring the right hand on top of the left. And 
inhale, bring the hands to center. Breathe here for a moment. And inhale, press up and tuck the toes and lift the hips up into downward facing dog. So again, fingertips, uh, fingertips, the index finger is pointing straight forward, tailbone is lifted high. Or you can have that generous bend in the knees, the low bellies pulling in and up. And breathe. And take a big inhale and exhale. You're gonna look forward and either, and it just walk slowly to the top of the mat. And bring the feet to hips distance or wider. So a good way to know if you've got your feet at hips distance is to take your hands into fists and place them down side by side in between your feet. And that is about hips distance. In that space there and fold here allow yourself to have a generous bend in the knees and uttanasana forward fold and breathe maybe gently nod the head yes and shake the head no I'm gonna move this way a little bit <laughs> Bring the hands to opposite elbows and let your head be really heavy here. Keep that generous bend in the knees. And breathe. Maybe sway a little bit side to side. Go ahead and release the hands down. Take a big, long inhale, long, slow exhale. And then keeping that bend in the knees, you're gonna slowly roll up to standing. So you'll stack vertebra and vertebra, just moving really, really slow here. Letting the head be the last thing to come up. And take a big inhale, bringing the shoulders up by the ears and sigh it out. And we'll find Tadasana. I'm gonna turn and face y'all so you can see what I'm doing here. So my feet are hips distance apart, or you can take them out wider. You want the, the, the quads engaged here, that low belly's pulling in and up, the shoulders are down away from the ears. You're gonna turn the palms out Opening up the chest here and breathe. This is Tadasana, mountain pose. So you should feel a, a rooting down in the feet and a lifting up as you stand here. So in mountain pose, you should feel really strong and steady. So if like a giant gust of wind were to come, you'd be like, I'm standing firm. And breathe here in Tadasana. Make sure you're not locking your knees though, okay? So you wanna have, you know, the quads are engaged, so you shouldn't be able to lock your knees. You're gonna have just the tiniest, the tiny, tiny, tiny bend in the knees. And breathe here. So even though we're just standing here, this is a very active pose. So you've got all sorts of muscles engaged here. Because you could just be standing here like this. <laughs> You've noticed the difference. The back is all rounded. So you want to have the back straight, shoulder blades gently pulling together, feeling strong and tall. You also don't want to be exaggerating with the chest thrown out either. So breathe here. I'm gonna move back to the top of my mat. I'm gonna inhale the arms out and up and exhale palms together at the heart. And breathe. And take a big inhale, long, slow exhale. 
Inhale the arms out and up and exhale palms together at the heart. Inhale the arms out and up. Exhale, palms together at the heart. Inhale the arms out and up. Exhale, fold forward at the hips. Coming into Uttanasana. And inhale, halfway lift, finding Ardha Uttanasana. So hands can come to the thighs. They can come to the shins whatever feels best for you. Uh, legs are engaged, a little bit of a tiny, tiny bend, and finding a flat back here. So we have so much, We have our shoulders are always so, so rounded. So we wanna bring the shoulder blades together, shoulders are away from the ears, finding that flat back. And breathe here, low bellies pulling in and up. And the gaze is down towards the mat. And take a big inhale and exhale, fold down. Bend the knees, you're gonna root down in your feet and inhale, press into the feet, arms come out and up. Lean back gently, low bellies pulling in and up to support the back. And exhale, palms together at the heart. Inhale the arms out and up. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, root to rise, really press into the feet. Inhale the arms out and up. Lean back gently, and exhale, palms together at the heart. So keeping the low belly pulling in and up as we're moving through the different poses helps to support the low back. Um, we have so much tendency too to have our, our belly falling forward and, and just kind of all slumped over in lots of different ways. So keeping that core engaged really helps with the, the low back. So inhale the arms out and up, exhale fold forward over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. You're gonna plant the left hand down. So, and have a, a, you're gonna have a generous bend in the left knee, and the left hand's gonna plant down. So, you can have hand up on fingertips, you can have hand fully flat. If you've got a block or, um, or a stack of books, you can bring your hand onto one of those, or even placing the hand on the thigh, not the thigh, the shin. <laughs> What's this body? Sorry, you guys, <laughs> on the shin. And you'll inhale and lift the right arm up. So you've got that low belly pulling in and up, shoulders are away from the ears, and your hand is either fully flat, up on fingertips, maybe on a block, or maybe on your shin and really reaching through the fingertips here. One thing is you wanna make sure that you're not bending the, um, the fingers at the hand where it connects here. That's not good on the fingers or the palms, so either all the way up on fingertips or hand fully flat. And breathe, low bellies pulling in and up, getting this twist in the spine. The palm of the right hand is facing in the same direction as your face. And breathe. And take a big inhale. And exhale, fold forward. You're gonna plant the right hand. The right knee is gonna bend. And inhale the left arm up towards the ceiling. So again, hand the right hand can be fully flat up on fingertips, up on a block, or maybe on the shin. And breathe. Really reaching through those fingertips. The palm is facing in the same direction as the face. Low bellies pulling in and up. And take a big inhale, and exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, halfway lift, finding that flat back, Ardha Uttanasana, and fold. Bend the knees and root to rise and inhale the arms out and up. Lean back gently and exhale, palms together at the heart. Take a big, long inhale, long, slow exhale. Another big, long inhale, long, slow exhale. So one thing that is used a lot in yoga classes is a sun salutation, a Surya Namaskar, sun salute. <laughs> and uh, it's a really good warm up, it um, really gets the heart beating and brings a lot of movement into the body. Um, so. Uh, I, I really enjoy the sun salutations. We're going to take that. We're going to go through a sun salutation. Um, we'll move fairly slow and um, to give you time to get into the different poses. So you'll start off at the top of the mat in Tadasana. And inhale the arms out and up. And exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, finding that flat back. And exhale, fold. You're going to bend the knees and plant the hands and step the left foot far back. Lower the left knee and inhale, look forward. So hands can be down on the mat or you can bring the hands to the thigh. You want to have that left hip pulling forward and breathe here. Low bellies pulling in and up. And take a big inhale. And exhale, hands come down. You're gonna step the right foot back to meet the left. And inhale, lower the knees. <clears throat> and exhale, lower the chest and chin. You'll keep the hips lifted. And you'll shift forward, lowering the hips. And inhale, open the chest and look forward. This cobra pose here. And breathe. And take a big inhale and exhale, press into the hands and lift the hips up into downward facing dog. And inhale, lift the right leg long behind you, toes pointing down. And then bring the right foot down and inhale, lift the left leg long behind you. And look forward, you'll swing the left leg up between the hands. If it comes to here, you're going to grab the foot and help bring it forward between the hands and lower the right knee and inhale look forward hands can stay down or you can bring hands to the thigh you want that right hip pulling forward and breathe and take a big inhale and exhale hands come down you're going to step that right foot forward to meet the left and fold Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees and root to rise. Inhale, the arms out and up. Lean back gently. Low belly pulls in and up. And exhale, palms together at the heart. Take a big, long inhale. Long, slow exhale. Inhale, the arms out and up. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees and plant the hands and step the right foot far back. Lower the right knee and inhale, look forward. Hands can stay down or you can bring the hands to the left thigh. That right hip is pulling forward and breathe. And take a big inhale and exhale, plant the hands, step the left foot back to meet the right. Inhale, lower the knees. Exhale, lower chest and chin. Hips are lifted. You'll shift forward, lowering the hips. And inhale, open the chest and look forward. And take a big inhale. And exhale, press into the hands and lift the hips up. Downward facing dog. Lift the left leg long behind you. Lower the left foot. And inhale, lift the right leg long behind you. Look forward. You're going to swing the right foot up between the hands. 
If it only comes part way, you're gonna grab that right foot and bring it forward. Lower the left knee and inhale, look forward. Left hip is pulling forward. You can have um, the hands down or bring the hands to the thigh. And breathe here. And take a big inhale. Then exhale, hands come down. Step the left foot forward to meet the right and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees and root to rise. Inhale the arms out and up. Lean back gently, low belly pulls in and up. And exhale, palms together at the heart. Take a big, long inhale, long, slow exhale. So that was a full sun salutation. There's lots of different variations of doing a sun salutation, um, but it brings a lot of movement and energy into the body. And if you do like 10 rounds of those, then you've got quite the cardio workout going, leg strengthening, back bending, all sorts of fun stuff going on in the sun salutation. All right, so now finding Tadasana. Breathe here, palms forward, low belly pulling in and up. Take a big inhale, long, slow exhale. Inhale the arms out and up. And exhale, sit the hips back, coming into chair pose, Utkatasana. So in chair pose, you wanna make sure that your knees are right over your feet. It's the, the biggest, one of the biggest things is making sure the knees are over the feet. So if your feet are together, your knees are together. If your feet are apart, your knees are apart. It helps to protect all of the joints in the legs. So you want always, always want to make sure that that's all lined up. The low belly's pulling in and up. You can have hands at the heart or you can extend the arms up alongside the ears and breathe here. That low belly's really engaged here. Quads are engaged. And breathe. Take a big inhale and exhale, fold forward over the legs. Let the head relax. Maybe sway a little bit here, side to side. And inhale, halfway lift and exhale, fold. Bend the knees and root to rise and inhale the arms out and up, lean back gently and exhale, palms together at the heart. Take a big, long inhale, long, slow exhale. So we're gonna come into one of our warrior poses. There are three different warrior poses and um, so we'll come We'll start off with warrior two, just because I, I really like that one. <laughs> so you'll inhale the arms out and up and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale, fold. You're gonna bend the knees and step the left foot far back and spin the left heel down. So you want the heel of your right foot is intersecting with the arch of the left foot. <clears throat> so once you have your feet arranged how they, they should be, the left toes are pointing towards the long edge of the mat, right toes are pointing straight forward, you know, inhale the arms up and then out over the legs. That right knee is bent and breathe here. So I've got my back to you. You, know, you can notice that the shoulders are down away from the ears and my shoulders are lined up right over my hips. The gaze is over the right fingertips. That right knee is right over the right ankle. And breathe here. 
and you're really pressing into the back edge of your left foot. So this pose, you can make it as active or inactive as you like. So you can have the arms all loosey-goosey, relaxed, and the right leg really not doing much, and the belly hanging. And, but it can become a, a very active pose if you really engage that right leg, that low belly's pulling in and up, you're really reaching through the fingertips like you're trying to reach the walls. And breathe here. So you want to be pressing into the space behind the big toe, the space behind the pinky toe, and the heel of the foot on both feet. And breathe. Keeping that low belly pulling in and up. And take a big inhale. Then exhale, cartwheel the hands down. You're going to let that left heel come up and frame that front foot and step the left foot forward to meet the right and fold. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale, fold. So bend the knees and plant the hands and step the right foot far back. Spin the right heel down. So you want the left heel intersecting with the arch of the right foot. So once your feet are set up, you'll press into that left foot, use your core, and inhale, coming all the way up, arms extending out over the legs, coming into Virabhadrasana 2 on this side, Warrior 2. So again, shoulders are down away from the ears, low belly's pulling in and up, and the shoulders are lined up right over the hips. So you may find yourself like this. So you'll want to straighten start to bring a uh, less of a bend in that left knee until you can bring the shoulders right over the hips. Low belly is engaged. Shoulders are down away from the ears. We always have a tendency to have them up like this. The shoulders down away from the ears. I'm really reaching through the fingertips. So this knee that's bent always wants to come kind of forward, folding inward. We don't want that. We want to make sure that that knee is out over the ankle. So you should be able to look down, see if you can see your big toe, your left big toe, your left index toe, your left ring, middle toe, ring toe, all of those. See if you can see them. Keeping that low belly pulling in and up and really reaching through those fingertips and breathe. Building up strength in the legs. And take a big inhale. And exhale, you're gonna cartwheel the hands down, let that back heel come up and step the right foot forward to meet the left and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees and root to rise and inhale the arms out and up. Lean back gently, low belly's pulling in and up. And exhale, palms together at the heart. Take a big long inhale, long slow exhale. Another part of yoga is working on balance. So we're gonna come and we're gonna work on some bal a balancing pose now called Vrikshasana, tree pose. So uh, one that you can move closer towards a wall or you can step off of your yoga mat if um, the floor that you want if the floor that you're on is more stable than the yoga mat stepping off can be really nice sometimes you can bring a block to place the lifted foot on um, there's all sorts of things that you can do I'm gonna stay on my mat here I can't say that moving off of it would be any better since I'm on carpet. <laughs> so you'll bring the hands, you can have hands at the, um, at the, together at the heart or hands at the hips, whatever feels best for you. You want to find what's called your drishti, your focal point. So something that is out and kind of low. So maybe a baseboard or maybe the bottom edge of your couch or I have no idea what's in your room so um, 
but you, so you'll have to figure out uh, something, something that's out and low and not moving. So if it's your cat that's laying there, don't focus on your cat because at some point it's probably going to get up and move. So maybe focus on an outlet or um, an air vent or, you know, who knows. But anyway, <laughs> so hands at the hips or palms together at the heart. You're finding your drishti, your focal point. And you're going to shift your weight to the right foot and bring the toes of the left foot down. The left knee is out, so opening up the hips here. And the toes are down on the mat. And the sole of the left foot is at the right ankle. And breathe here. So we're just starting off in Vrikshas Vrikshasana. So you want to make sure you've got that right quad is engaged. You're not locking that knee. The low belly's pulling in and up. And you're lifting in the crown of the head here. So you should feel rooted down in that right foot and lifting all the way up out of the crown of the head. And breathe here. Once you're feeling good here, you can bring the sole of the left foot up to the inside of the right shin. <clears throat> and breathe here. If you're feeling really good here, you can bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Make sure you're not putting your foot on your knee, though, because that is not good for the joint. You want to be either above or below the knee to help protect that knee joint. And the hips are open. That left knee is pulling out towards the left. You've got that low belly engaged, quads engaged. You're really pressing into the left foot with the right leg. Breathe here. Stay focused on your drishti. You can stay here. You can slowly start to extend the arms up towards the ceiling. You can have palms together, arms out wide, and sway in the wind. <laughs> Personally, I like to stand still <laughs> and breathe here. Keeping all of those muscles engaged, that low belly pulling in and up. Make sure you've got the shoulders down away from the ears. And soften your jaw. The tendency is to, to start clenching the jaw and the forehead. You're concentrating so hard. Soft, soften all of those spaces. Maybe even smile a little bit. And take a big inhale. And exhale very gently. Let yourself come out of the pose. And probably take some wiggly movements here. My hips are always like, what are you doing to me? Why? After three kids, there's my hips are always protesting. <laughs> Maybe take a take a little bit of movements, and then when you're ready, we'll come back to Tadasana, and then bring the hands either to the hips or palms together at the heart, and find your drishti, and shift your weight to the left foot. Bring the toes of the left foot, not left foot, toes of the right foot down, sole of the right foot at the left ankle. Knee is opening up, so the hips are open here. And breathe. Get the left quad is engaged. Make sure you're not locking that knee. Low belly's pulling in and up, shoulders down away from the ears. And breathe here. So if you're feeling good here, you can start to lift that right foot, bringing the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left shin. Or you can bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. So make sure you're not putting your foot on the knee. You either want it above or below the knee. That low belly's pulling in and up. So you're finding that, finding that grinding, grinding, grounding down in the left foot and then lifting all the way up through the belly and up through the crown of the head. And breathe here. So 
So really pressing into the right foot with the left leg. So you can keep the hands here. You can extend the arms. Here's really reaching through the fingertips here. Make sure the shoulders are away from the ears. Smile a little bit. And take a big inhale and exhale very gently. Release it all down and take some movements here. Bending the knees, shaking the feet out. Whatever feels good for you. <clears throat> and then we're going to come all the way down to a seat and take the legs out long. You may need to shift a little bit side to side to get the sitting bones firmly rooted. So the legs are out long, the toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. You know, bring the hands alongside the body and inhale the arms out and up, and keeping the spine long. You're gonna hinge at the hips and then bring the hands down into Paschimottanasana, forward fold. So depending on your hamstrings, right here might be where you are. You may be able to fold forward a little bit further. You wanna keep the feet active you may need to bring a bend to the knees, especially if it's, a, if it's too much on the backs of the knees, definitely bring a bend to those knees. You wanna try and keep the spine long though, wherever you are. So you can really feel that stretch in the hamstrings. And breathe here. Keep the feet active. Soften your jaw. And inhale, come up. And exhale, release the arms down. And take a scoot forward on your mat and slowly lower yourself down onto your back. Once you're there, take the legs out long, take the arms long, and take a big full stretch. Big inhale, and sigh it out. Bring the knees into the chest and give them a hug in. Maybe rock a little bit side to side. So hands can be on the knees or behind the thighs. You're gonna make some big circles on the ceiling with the knees. Go in the opposite direction. And bring the knees into the chest and curl the forehead up towards the knees and release the head down and take the feet up long towards the ceiling and point and flex the feet. Make some circles with the feet. Go in the opposite direction. And then flex the feet and bring the hands behind the thighs. You want to bring the legs as much towards straight as you can. And so the hands are behind the thighs, so you might be here. And breathe here, let the jaw be soft. You may be able to bring the legs a little bit more up towards the ceiling. You may be able to bring the legs in a little bit closer towards the chest. You want to keep the feet flexed though and breathe here. And 
take a big inhale and exhale. Bend the knees and bring the soles of the feet down. Let the legs windshield wiper side to side here. And then bring the knees up into the chest and give them a hug in. And curl the forehead up towards the knees. And release the head down. Take the arms out to a T. A big inhale. And exhale, let the knees fall towards the right. And the gaze comes over the left shoulder. And breathe here. If that left shoulder starts coming up off of the mat, you want to lift the knees up some until that shoulder can come down. So you may need to bring a block or some books or a rolled up blanket underneath the knees to help support them. Inhale, bring the knees up into the chest, bring the arms around and curl the forehead up towards the knees. And inhale, drop the head, take the arms out to a T. And exhale, let the knees fall towards the left and the gaze comes over the right shoulder. If that right shoulder starts coming up, bring the knees up some until that shoulder can come down. Make sure you're breathing. Inhale, bring the knees back up into the chest. And curl the forehead up towards the knees. And release the head down. Let the knees come wide and the hands come around the outsides of the feet or to the shins. And let the feet come wide, coming into happy baby. And breathe here. You can stay in stillness here in Happy Baby, or you can rock gently side to side, or you can straighten one leg and bend the other and alternate between the two. If you're feeling like your body needs any other stretches or movement, you can go ahead and do that before we come to our final resting pose. And then you'll bend the knees and bring the knees into the chest. Give them one last hug in. And inhale, release the head down. Take the legs out long on the mat letting the feet relax and fall open. You know, bring the arms long, palms up. Coming into our final resting pose, Shavasana. So here in Shavasana, you wanna let the body relax. Let the muscles grow heavy and soft. The toes, the fingers are relaxed. 
feet in the hands, the legs and the arms are all relaxed. You feel your hips and back settling down onto the floor. head is relaxed, the cheeks are soft, the tongue is relaxed away from the roof of the mouth, the forehead is soft, Breathing return back to its normal pace. the mind relax. Any thoughts that come in, let them be like the ocean waves. If you'd like to stay here in Shavasana for a while longer, you can press the pause button and be here for as long as you like. If you're ready to come out of Shavasana, start to bring some gentle movement to the fingers and the toes, the hands and the feet. Maybe let the head rock gently from side to side. And when you're ready, curl onto whichever side you would like and pause there for a moment. When you're ready, press up, coming back to a comfortable seat. 
We're coming back to Sukhasana. And bring the palms together at the heart and close the eyes and breathe here for a moment. Take a big, full, deep breath in, filling the lungs all the way to the top and pause. And open the mouth and sigh it out. Take another big, full, deep breath in, filling the lungs all the way to the top and pause. And open the mouth and sigh it out. The light in me sees and honors that same light that is in each of you. Namaste. Thank you all for coming and practicing with me today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and a wonderful week, and I will see you all again soon.